Right then, so I wanted to do a simple definition of what Bitcoin is, and it's quite hard for me to simplify it, but also give you a good amount of information on it. So yeah, it's quite hard, this one, for me to do, actually, this video. It's, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be to do. So um, I would basically do your own due diligence as well, watch other videos, watch other people, learn about it yourself a little bit more. Uh, don't just go off my information, you know, get a nice variety of information, and then you know you've, uh, you know, you, you've done, uh, done the right thing by yourself, really. So yeah, anyway, so Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a digital currency. So if we say PayPal, right, um, PayPal is digital money. So like, you know, you can have uh, a certain amount of Great British Pounds in your PayPal account right now, right? And then you can transfer it to your bank and then you can go to an ATM and you can get that money out in banknotes. Well, you can't do that with Bitcoin. It's solely digital. It, you know, it's a digital currency. Um, so... It, you know, there's no like getting it out in banknotes or anything like that. It's, ju it's just digital. Um, it has a limited supply, so the, you know there's just a, a limited number that can ever be, um, and it is decentralized. Now, decentralization, this is important. Decentralization is where the thing in question, it, you know, the thing that is decentralized, isn't controlled by one person or in one place. So that is important. Created in 2008 by an unknown programmer going by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. So um, there was an article that I read that an Australian guy came forward last year. I didn't, well, I didn't read it in its entirety, but an Australian guy came forward last year and uh, revealed that he was the creator of Bitcoin. Now, I didn't, uh, you know, he was obviously the guy going by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto, but I didn't read it in its entirety. I don't know whether that got fizzled out, I don't know whether that was a false claim or something like that, um, and the guy still remains unknown. I'm not sure you'd have to read that article yourselves, but I don't I don't know, I don't think that was the guy, but anyway, you can read that article yourselves. So, now I'm going to talk about the blockchain. So, blockchain is basically a shared ledger in which there is no one person or place in control. So again, the blockchain, like Bitcoin, is decentralized. Um, you can send Bitcoin through the blockchain uh, using a Bitcoin address. Now, the simplest way for me to explain a Bitcoin address is like an email address. You, you know, you say, for example, there's someone in America and they've got their own Bitcoin receiving address, right? I say to them, I, for example, let's just take it like this, you know, I, um, in the future, I'm going to be sending cryptocurrency to people as birthday presents, right? I think that's, I think that's a great use for it. it I, I, I mean, it's not, obviously, it's not the best use by far, but um, I think that's a good use for it. So, in the future, I've got a few people who I know who I've set up with uh, Bitcoin addresses and Bitcoin wallets. So, I'm, it, you know, in the future, I'm just going to send them cryptocurrency for their birthday. So, um, basically, they will give me their little Bitcoin address, it's just a string of numbers, and um, I will then paste that into my little send Bitcoin box on my wallet, and I will type in the number of Bitcoin I want to send, or whatever cryptocurrency I want to send, and I can send it to them, there will be a transaction fee, but I will send it to them, and then they will receive it minutes later. So, it's... Um, yeah, it's basically like an email address. You all have these little email addresses or Bitcoin addresses, and you can send money to one, well, not money, but you can send cryptocurrency to one another. And uh, obviously, if you've got like uh, different cryptocurrencies, because Bitcoin is only one of the cryptocurrencies, if you've got different cryptocurrencies, then you'll have different, receipt, you know, you'll have different addresses for all those other different cryptocurrencies that you want to send. So, the, the way also, the thing about having a Bitcoin address being a string of numbers is it makes it private. Um, the transaction is private, you, you know, the transaction on the blockchain wouldn't show Adam Robinson sent da -de -da -de -da to someone else, you know, their name. It's a string of numbers, so it's private. They can't see, like, who you are, you know, your name or anything like that. So that's pretty, pretty cool, really, as well. Um, so... Loads of different computers, I'm going to really simplify the blockchain here. Loads of different computers around the world 
make up the shared ledger known as the blockchain, right? Um, once you request to send Bitcoin to another address using your little Bitcoin email address that I mentioned, um, the ledger will become updated and the computers will confirm this transaction, right? Anyone, so that, you know, all these ledgers all around the world on these computers will become updated, right? And this is a very, very simple definition. Um, anyone can verify transactions on the blockchain. So anyone in the world can go and verify transactions on the blockchain. If you do a little bit of searching on Google, you'll, be, you'll find that you'll be able to do that quite easy. You know, you just need to do a bit of searching for the right sites and stuff to uh, see the blockchain. Um, and this makes the blockchain less exposed to tampering, right? Due to having thousands of ledgers or loads of different ledgers stored all around the world. You know, one person can't access all those ledgers. So it makes it um, more trustworthy, really, in a sense, less, uh, you know, less prone to tampering. Let's take the example of a bank. Now, a bank is centralized. It's not decentralized. It's centralized. So they may only have, you know, a few different copies of a ledger in one place, right? And that bank is centralized. So, you know, it might be a CEO of a bank or whatever and or there might be, you know, uh, the, the boss of a bank. So that that makes it somewhat untrustworthy because for one, it's prone to tampering with the ledgers more easily um, because obviously there's less of them. There might be only a few, uh, you know, a few copies stored in different, you know, different areas, you know, on computers and stuff like that and paper copies. And, uh, but with the blockchain, there's thousands of these things or hundreds of these things. So. Um, and also, with a bank, there's people in control. There's like one person in control or, you know, a very small number of people in control. So that obviously makes it less trustworthy in itself because those people can corrupt it and tamper with it. So being a shared ledger like the blockchain, it really reduces that, um, that sort of fear of it being bad information or being tampered with and stuff like that. So. Yeah, it's really, really cool. And, and this blockchain technology can, can be applied for loads and loads of different things across the world. And this is why a lot of people are very excited about the future of Bitcoin because the blockchain can be applied to a lot of problems that are going, in, uh, going on in the modern world at the moment. So uh, yeah, it's very, very exciting time really with uh, the blockchain. And um, yeah, just really cool. So I, I, I just wanted to mention that. That's a very simple definition. So I'll just quickly go through that again. Um, just very, very, you know, just quickly do it because I know sometimes information can be a bit, uh, it can't really go in the first time. I know for me, sometimes I need to read it a few times. So very, very quickly, I'll just speed through this again. Bitcoin is a digital currency. It has a limited supply. It's decentralized, so it's not uh, controlled by one person or one place. Created in 2008 by an unknown programmer going by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, the blockchain is basically a shared ledger in which, which there is no one person or place in control. So again, the blockchain is decentralized just like Bitcoin. Uh, you can send Bitcoin through the blockchain using a Bitcoin address. Like I mentioned, you have a Bitcoin email address and the other person will receive it minutes later. Um, loads of different computers around the world make up the shared ledger known as the blockchain. And once you request to send Bitcoin to another, uh, yeah, once you request to send Bitcoin to another address, the ledger will become updated and the computers will, will confirm the transaction. Anyone in the world can verify the blockchain. This makes the blockchain less exposed to tampering due to having thousands or hundreds of different ledgers all around the world, you know, not in one place, not controlled by one person. So yeah, that, that's sort of the definition. I'll leave it there, guys, and I will get on to how you can buy Bitcoin. So yeah, see you in the next part. Right then, so let's just say, in theory, you want to buy Bitcoin. How do you do it in the most reputable, the most trustworthy way? How do you avoid any of these nasty scams or something like that? Because there are sites out there, unfortunately, that will try and scam you. But if you do, you know, your own due diligence, you look into things well, well enough, you will choose the right sites to buy Bitcoin with and you will ultimately not get scammed and you will have a pleasant investing experience. So I wanted to talk about the one 
that I like the most. Now, I know a few people in the cryptocurrency space, well, a fair few people in the cryptocurrency space, complain complain about fees with Coinbase, that's the name of the, the site. But, um, you know, it's reputable, it's trustworthy, I really do like the site. So let's just go flick onto it here. So, uh, where is it now? Here. This is the, so this is the main view of the site. I've got a few different tabs open of different places in the site, but uh, this is the main view of the site. So uh, you can see here, this is what you will confront. You can click up here to sign up. That will take you to a page where you want to enter your name, um, I think email and a password, but it is a bit more complex than that. If you have been in the stock market, you will know that when you sign up for an online broker, they will want to get your identification verified. So you'll need to send in some documents, some photographs of some documents to basically, so that they can basically verify your identity. With Coinbase, it's the same thing. So it's a little bit more complex than just, you know, starting up a Gmail account, for example, but it, you know, you'll get there in the end. It's fairly easy to follow the steps. Um, but yeah, if you want to sign up, then that's you know that's how you can do it obviously i wanted to draw your attention to the referral program as well now my link down below will be a referral link so if you don't if you know if you have any qualms with uh, using a referral link just type in google coinbase that's fine by me but i wanted to let you know about this sort of offer that coinbase has on um if you sign up through my link you and I will both get seven pounds worth of free Bitcoin from Coinbase themselves. So it's nothing out of your pocket, nothing out of my pocket. They will give us seven pounds of free Bitcoin each. Now, obviously, some of that will just go to covering the fees. You know, if you've uh, if you're making your first if you're making your first purchase, uh, obviously that's seven pound free. Some of that will go towards paying for your fee, but at least you'll get a little bit of free Bitcoin on top. Um, but that is if you spend over £75. I don't know whether I mentioned that, but yeah, if you spend over £75 of, uh, uh, you know, of money of, of, of pounds on uh, Bitcoin, then yeah, we'll both receive $10 or £7 of free Bitcoin, which is really cool. So if you do want to sign up, if you do want to get involved with Bitcoin, and you want to use Coinbase, then I'd really appreciate it if you use my link because it will be mutually beneficial for both of us. So that's uh, so that's that. I wanted to talk about that. Now let me see here. Right. So if I um, let me see if I can go back to the dashboard. I don't want to. Don't think I'm going to sign out here. I hope I don't sign out. Uh, right. So here's the dashboard. Here's what basically uh, the inside of an account looks like. So you'll be confronted with the graphs here and don't worry too much about graphs. I will cover videos on graphs and stuff. I'm not really clued up with what's known as technical analysis where you're like looking at graphs and predicting whether things are gonna go up and down. But you know, I'll do, I'll cover a video on graphs in a little bit of detail, but you know, you just got this standard graph like in the stock market. For example, Facebook stocks have gone up by X number of percent. All this is showing is that Bitcoin is going up or down. That, that's it, basically. And as you can see, over the last month, um, it's gone up £1,794, which is a crazy, crazy return on your money. 41% in the last month. If we do uh, one year, you can see in the last year, it's gone up £5,548 with a 933% increase. Now that is a lot better than putting your money in a bank. But again, there is a good element of risk with cryptocurrency. So you've got to sort of uh, identify your risk to reward uh, ratio. So as you can see, I don't have any money in Coinbase. I um, basically, I uh, watched a few videos that said it might not be the best idea to keep your money in exchanges. So I've got a private wallet on my computer where I keep my money, but I'll go into private wallets and stuff like that, you know, and, uh, you know, Bitcoin wallets and stuff like that in another video. Let's just say you get on Coinbase, you've signed up and you want to buy some Bitcoin for the first time. You're, you're happy with the research that you've done. And let's just say you want to buy 20 quid or 30 quid worth of Bitcoin. So you come to your dashboard here. It's really, really simple. This is, I really do like this. Um, oh, if you're wondering what these two are here, these are, these three here are like the big three cryptocurrency coins. So you've got Bitcoin, 
Ethereum and Litecoin. So Litecoin is at £53, Ethereum's at 297 Bitcoin's at 6 5 and so. Basically, uh, in the cryptocurrency space, you've not just got Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, it's a digital currency, but you've got like hundreds or if not thousands of other coins which are referred to as altcoins. Now, all altcoins means it's just short, short for alternative coin because it's an alternative to Bitcoin. And they're all going up, at, up and down at different rates and maybe news stories will come out about a coin and that'll send the coin up and so, you know, stuff like that or a rumor will come, about, uh, come out about the coin and the coin will go up or so, you know, something like that. So, you know, um, it's just like a stock market basically. There's all these different things going up and down, but don't worry about that too much. Let's just focus on Bitcoin. So you want to buy Bitcoin, you come over here to the buy sell uh, tab here and you select Bitcoin, you make, make sure Bitcoin's selected here. Um, now, if you choose, you go down to here. Where, so you won't be able to see this because I've blanked it out because I don't want to share my uh, bank information or anything like that. But um, basically, you just click on this little tab here. Uh, you need to like uh, link a bank account with th with this account. But again, it shouldn't be too hard. And then instead of... Uh, being on what's known as you uh, currently I'm sat on my euro wallet here um, you want to select your bank account so you just go down the little drop down menu and select your known bank account and then you select that you'll uh, what will come up here it'll change down here where, where it says amount um, you will have a weekly card limit of 500 pounds I believe when you start the more Bitcoin you buy, the more you can increase that weekly card limit. So I've been buying a lot of Bitcoin and other altcoins. So um, my weekly card limit is at 2,500. Um, so every week I can buy 2,500 worth of Bitcoin. Uh, not that I would do that, but you know, it's nice to know that I have that flexibility. So let's say you don't want to spend, you know, 75 pound or you don't want to spend 100 pound. Let's just say you want to put 20 quid in, right? You've not got a lot of money lying around as disposable income, or maybe you're just spending it on other things, and you just want to think, right, I'll just, I'll whack £20 into Bitcoin, and I'll just see what happens over the next year, two years, four years. Um, so then you just literally type in this left-hand box here, uh, where it says GBP, which is Great British Pound, type in £20, and then it will, uh, it'll show you in this right-hand box here how much Bitcoin you will get for your 20 pounds now there is a fee involved um i, I believe that the more bit uh, the, the more amount of bitcoin you purchase the lower the fee goes i will actually test that theory in a minute um but as you can see it's not very clear but i'll highlight it down here um you can see the fee for that transaction would be one pound 49 so let's say you want around 20 pounds you don't want because you'd be receiving 18 pound 51 of bitcoin there so let's you, say you want around 20 pound if you increase that number in this uh, column in, in this box here to 21 pound 49 you will then come out with around 20 pounds uh, of bitcoin after your fee uh, obviously you can see up here where it says you are buying you are buying x number of bitcoin at the current price of 6220.18 uh, um, payment method is the card there again i'm going to blank that out um, availability instantly and uh, deposit to your B BTC wallet in Coinbase, which is just on your dashboard, which you will have seen. Um, so yeah, it, it is really as simple as that. And when you click buy Bitcoin, it is very, very simple, very, very simple process, very, very quick. And then you will go back to your dashboard. And again, the same, you can buy Ethereum if you want to buy Ethereum. You can buy Litecoin if you want to buy Litecoin. And then you just switch over to the to the sell tab there and, and sell some if you want. But let's go back to the dashboard. So let's say you just bought 20 quid. Uh, it should show up down here where it says Bitcoin here. It says your portfolio and then it says Bitcoin. It should show up there and it should be pretty instant. Should be pretty instant. So yeah, um, that's that anyway. So I just wanted to share with you that. That's the way you buy Bitcoin. That's probably the most trustworthy or reputable way. Um, and then obviously you can keep it in the exchange if you would like to or um, you know you can download a private wallet and I will uh, probably go into that as well 
in another video, you know, private wallets, stuff like that, you know, Bitcoin wallets, things like that. So, yeah, um, I'll leave it there, guys. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a like. And, uh, yeah, I will be back for more ads invest videos very soon. So, I will see you in the next one, guys.